In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 800-471-3287 The internet will never be the same You're listening to K98talk.com Zinc Media Feel the power of knowledge Intro theme music. I think not. Hello, my fellow Americans and fellow liberty lovers all across the globe. This wonderful planet that we call Earth, it is I, your lovable host, Elrod. And I'm coming to you live tonight. That's right, this Friday night. It's Friday. Friday Follies. Free for all Friday. Right here on the Rod Eccles Show, the number that you can call to participate, because on Free For All Fridays, which is basically Friday Follies, I'm shortening it to Friday Follies, so for all you Ecclesiastites who are used to me saying, 
uh, the fr- uh, free for all Fridays. I'm now calling it, I should call it Freaky Fridays. What do you think? Should it be Friday Follies, Freaky Follies, or, or fr- uh, Freaky Fridays, or <laughs> Freaky fr- Follies, sure, or uh, Free for All Friday? You know what? I'm going to pose that question over on the page, uh, the Facebook page over at Rod Eccles' uh, Facebook page on Facebook. That's why they call it a Facebook page, because it's on Facebook. So Facebook.com slash The Rod Eccles Show. And I want y'all, that's Southern lingo for you all, uh, to go over there and I'm going to I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do it. So, so go over there and answer. The, you'll see it. Answer the, 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 the poll. I guess I can make a poll question, can't I? Well, I'll figure that out. So I'm going to ask the question so you'll get, get a chance to answer it. Uh, whether you like the Friday show being called Freaky Friday, uh, Friday Follies, or Free for All Fridays, or, or maybe even I'll throw in Freaky Friday. Uh, just so people know, I'm not freaky. But uh, yeah, I'm, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get freaky with it. But I think that was actually getting jiggy with it, right? Yeah, that, that was, that was Will Smith's, uh, hit song, getting jiggy with it. I don't get jiggy with it either. Whatever, whatever jiggy is. Uh, the number that you can call tonight, uh, is toll free 603-835-3224. Again, that's 603 603- Eight three five three two two four, and the reason why, for those of you who are new to listening to this program, uh, why I give it a special name, you know, free for all Fridays or Freaky Fridays or whatever we're going to call it, is simply because Fridays we try to be a little bit, or at least I try to be a little bit uh, less serious because going into the weekend, you know, we don't want to be all stressed out for the weekend. We want to be able to enjoy our weekend, so I I tend to lighten it up a little bit. And you'll find that most Fridays I do not, um, I don't lose it, as it were. I know, you know, I had somebody, um, I got an email from somebody who says that they like it when I go off. They say that's when I'm at, I'm at my best. Well, you know, it's not something I can fake. I just can't fake going off. It's really good. I mean, when I go off, if that's what you want to call it, is because I'm passionate about something. And it really has to hit home for me, for me to get, so it's not fake, it's genuine. I, I can't fake that. I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I guess I'm not a, a good actor then. I can't, uh, which is why I'm not in Hollywood. Just saying. Um, so that, that, I, I thank you for that, uh, if you like when I quote unquote go off on the left. Uh, but, uh, I can't do it, you know, whenever I want to. There has to be a reason. It's not fake. It's the real deal. Uh, so, yeah, I you know some people say, well, you probably should tone it down because you're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. But, you know, I've learned that um, I've got this type A type of personality. And actually, our personality types, we have to vent like that. Because if we actually calm down and hold it in, that's more str- uh, puts more stress on our body and our hearts then if we release it, we release it and let it go. I mean, that's that that's therapy for us, basically. And um, that, that's just the way it is. Uh, that, biologically speaking, that's, you know, you, you have you have type A. What you, I think you have three personality types. You have the type A and the type B and the type C. And type A is, you know, very well, I wouldn't say I'm fully type A, though. I'm not fully aggressive. I'm not aggressive all the time. Um, I. I I like to think that I have a long fuse on my temper, but actually, you know, to, to be frank, it really depends on what it is. It really does. Um, I'm I'm not a very predictable type of person, and it's well, I'm not. I keep things exciting, that's for sure. So just a little insight on yours truly. I keep things exciting because I'm unpredictable. Uh, and, and that's the way I like it. Actually, I don't think I'm all that. I think I'm pretty predictable, actually. But that's that's me thinking I'm predictable. Uh, other people, they just can't really, they can't, I don't know, some people say that they can't figure me out. I'm an enigma. By the way, I like that group. There's a musical group called Enigma. 
I like that group. Hey, we've got... Um, I know people who probably want me to talk about and weigh in on the or- Oregon... Oregon. No, they say Oregon out in or- Oregon, I think. They say... Isn't that where they say? They say Oregon? Oregon. Out in Oregon. It's Oregon! Don't be a moron. Call it Oregon. Uh, <laughs> so they want me to weigh in on the shooting out in Oregon. And I will, but I think that there's something a little bit more, well, it, it it's more important. <coughs> Excuse me, because um, not that, what what is it, the, the, the actual level or number of lives lost is at nine. Is that, see, this is why I don't like doing these off-the-cuff types of reports of real events. Because the the facts often change. Well, I shouldn't even say facts because they just throw out... I mean, I, I, I was listening to it on my... Um, you know, I, I had an event yesterday. Uh, let, let me just say this about the event. I had an event out in Brookline, New Hampshire, where I gave a speech out with the Republican uh, group out in Brookline, New Hampshire. Small group, because it's a small town. There were, I don't know, roughly 10, 15 people there. Um, Yeah, it was really small, because it's a small town. I mean, there's probably only 10 or 15 people that live in the whole town. Uh, No, just kidding. It's it's a a really, you can look it up, the population is probably around five or six thousand in this town. Really, it's a real small town. So I gave it a, I gave a speech there in front of, um, they requested that I come and speak to them, and I did. And what usually happens at these events is that they also have some representative that shows up from one of the campaigns. Well, last night, evidently, there were two representatives there, one from um, the Carson camp and one from the Chris Christie camp. And, and, and now me, personally... I knew that they were there because before I was the first one to speak and before he introduced me to get up uh, to, to get up to the podium to speak, you know, he said that, that they were going to listen to me and then we're going to listen to a couple of uh, representatives from the Carson campaign and the Christie campaign. And frankly, it did not register with me at that particular point in time because, you know, frankly, I don't care about the representatives from these campaigns i really don't because they're all over the place so i got up there and spoke and i gave my speech like i was going to give it anyway and it was half memorized half off the cuff i love doing that kind of stuff again makes me unpredictable and it also makes it so every speech i give isn't exactly the same Makes it interesting. So people who might want to see me more than once, they're not going to get the exact same thing. They're not going to hear the exact same thing. They're going to get the same constitutional conservative message, but they're not going to get the exact same speech because it's geared towards those particular people or that group. And that's why I do it that way. And it keeps people on their toes and it keeps them interested because they know it's that when I'm talking to them, I'm talking to them. So I, I was halfway through the speech and I mentioned names, you know, people that I, I'm asked all the time about who I would rather see uh, who, if I'm, you know, behind anybody right now. And I'm not, but I could tell you who I'd rather not see. And I mentioned a couple of names. Well, one of the names was Chris Christie because I said rhinos. I don't think Americans are. I think Americans are tired of rhinos. And I said, I believe that Chris Christie is one of those. Along with another candidate. Again, I wasn't even thinking about the Chris Christie representative being in the room. Not that it would really have mattered. So after my speech was done, they asked if they could go through a question and answer session. I said, sure. Why not? Now, in the question and answer session, I did not mention any candidate names. I didn't. But I definitely hit on candidate platforms and what I believe was truly uh, constitutional conservatives, conservatism, boy, there's a tongue twister, and what was it? And I don't remember exactly what the topic was or the question was that I was answering, but as I was answering it, the Chris Christie representative stood up 
and walked out. That's right. He wa- That's the first time I have ever seen that happen. I made a representative from a presidential campaign walk out of the building. Now, it wasn't something that I was particularly caring about, but I just thought it was interesting. The, the, I don't, maybe I, I don't know. I didn't get a chance to ask him because he took off. I didn't understand, I didn't understand what upset him so much because he took off. He was gone. He walked out of the building. So when I got done with, you know, my part of the event, uh, I left and he was nowhere to be found. He took off. I had, I didn't get the chance to ask him what set him off that made him walk out. I wasn't going to apologize to him. I just wanted to know what what exactly it was that I wanted to know why he did, why he walked out. If you cannot sit in the fire for your candidate, then maybe that's not the candidate for you. No, that's not a maybe. It definitely that person definitely is not. If you cannot sit through all the the bashing that your candidate is going to take, then that's he he or she is not the candidate for you. I mean, if I pick a kid, look, you know, when Mitt Romney was the nominee back in the last uh, presidential election, he wasn't my first or second choice. But after he was a nominee, I stood for him because I knew he was going to be better than Obama. And there was no way in hell that you were going to get me to leave anywhere because I was going to stand in the fire for Romney and promote him because I want I we needed him in the White House over Obama. Now, if you cannot support your candidate already that way, then your candidate's already lost. I'm just being frank here. You got if you're going to get behind somebody. So this is why I'm not behind anybody yet because I'm still weighing the options and listening to people. And we can you know the, 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 let me tell you something else. <clears throat> We all we all know now. I I, I got to be frank. The the, the most of the uh, well, there was only one female in that group. I was talking to a group of men. The one female was the representative from Carson's camp, uh, and then of course the other Christie representative was also a male. But the entire room was full of males, so I had to gear my speech towards the men. Unfortunately, she was the only one, so I tried to every. Uh, every once in a while to include something for her that would pick her interest. But, uh, and by the way, I complimented Carson, so I'm sure that made her feel good. Uh, it, but, you know, it was geared towards guys because it was a room full of guys. And I got to tell you, <coughs> excuse me, mm, a tickle in my throat. Uh, I got to tell you, they... Those men d- weren't particularly interested in Republican lights either. The questions that they were asking me were rather pointed. And, I, and I know some of them were trying to trip me up to try to see if I was really as conservative as I said. And I think I surprised each and every one of them by coming down on the side of constitutional conservat- conservatism so hard. I think I surprised some of them. Look, look I, I'm telling you, folks, I'm no joke about this. I know it is not a perfect governing document. The founding fathers knew it was not a perfect governing document. That is why they made it so it could be changed from time to time. As the people wished it. You know, one of the things I hear sometimes from the left, well, we can't go for a constitutional amendment because it's not easy to do. Well, that's the point. It's not meant to be easy to change. They made it hard for a reason. Because it ha- whatever you do to make an amendment, it has to be argued, it has to be reasoned out, it has to be properly penned, written, for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Rio Linda, and then properly presented to the people. That's a long, difficult process. It was meant to be a long, difficult process. It wasn't meant to be easy peasy. And so 
we have amended the Constitution from time to time since those days from whence it was adopted. 1886. Or excuse me, 1786. I say 18, 1786, excuse me. It has been amended. So it's not impossible. It's been amended numerous times. So it's not impossible. But it was meant to prevent being amended at every possible little, you know, little thought whim that we the people think that we're getting our heads. <clears throat> and it prevents uh, certain peoples and groups from dictating how the Constitution is going to eventually look. That's why it is difficult to amend. It is to make sure that it is what the people want. The majority of the people. Not a few of the minority. And right now we have the minority <clears throat> excuse me, that are that is totally ignoring the Constitution and trying to go to the courts. And the courts are, of course, a lot of times, if they got a liberal judge, the courts are ignoring the Constitution and just writing law on the bench, which is unconstitutional. I got to tell you, I'm done. I am done with trying to follow unconstitutional laws in this country. If a judge writes a law, it is unconstitutional, therefore an illegal law, and I am not bound as a citizen of this country and a citizen of this state to follow an illegal law. It is like a military person is not bound to follow an illegal order from a superior officer. Plain and simple. I'm, I'm done follow, trying to follow these people. I am done with it. Now, if it's a controversial law, if it's a law I don't think that should be a law, that's a different story. But if it is plain as day that it is an illegal, unconstitutional law because it was written from the bench, and that means, you know what? Obamacare. Obamacare, you know, those people better come and get me. I'm saying it on the air. I do not have an insurance plan that meets Obamacare standards because I don't want or need their crap, and I'm not going to spend my money on it. Plain and simple. It's not a legitimate, constitutional, legal law. The Supreme Court usurped their power. They changed the damn law in order to make it legal. It's not written as, as the law was written by Congress and signed by the president. It's not. Therefore, you have two conflicting laws. Two laws that say the same thing, but they're conflicting because the Supreme Court thought that they could go ahead and rewrite it to make it say something that it did not say. That is illegal. Not even the Supreme Court, according to the Constitution, has that power. I will not follow an illegal, unconstitutional law. And I think if more Americans did the same thing, then that's what we should do, and we get less of this crap. So these wonderful uh, candidates, no, I don't care if it's for president or if it's for Senate or if it's for, for the House or whatever. If they tell you that, well, you know, that they him and haw on repealing Obamacare, you dump them like a, you drop them like a lead anchor in a saltless sea because they are not worth your time. If they will not stand up for the Constitution and defend it, then they do not deserve your vote. Now, I'm going to be straight up with you on that one. And I don't care who it is. If they cannot see and be willing to fight for this Constitution, then why are they running for office? Why? And yes, I was asked again, am I going to be running? No, I'm not running for anything. I'm not running for nothing. I don't have, you know what? I don't have time. I don't have time to be fooling around with a bunch of people who really don't care anyway, except for their own little selfish, uh, selfish self-interest. I, 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 don't, I don't have time to deal with all the politicos down in Washington, D.C. I don't. I don't think they're worth my time. Ooh, Rod thinks he's a big man. He, you know, even a congressman isn't worth his time. No, they're not. Look, 
I'm a human being. They're a human being. We each have 24 hours in a day. We each have a finite number of days on this earth. So, yeah, to me, my time is more valuable than theirs. And if I'm going to spend my time wisely, it has to be with people that I think I should be spending it with. And I don't think I should be spending it with them because they're not worth my time. It has nothing to do with whether or not I think I'm better than somebody else. It has everything to do with, are they actually worth my time? And let me tell you something. They're probably not worth your time either. So it's not just me. I'm saying they're probably not worth your time. Most of those uh, congressmen and senators down in Washington are not worth your time. So if they're not worth your time, they're not worth your vote. Get what I'm saying? If they're not worth your time, they're not worth your vote. And right now, there's a bunch of people down in Washington, D.C. that just are not worth my time. Now, fortunately for them, I don't have the opportunity to vote for or against most of the people down in Washington. But I'm sure going to be looking for a candidate who is worth my time. That's who's going to earn my vote. And if I have to bite my tongue and hold my nose in order to get a somewhat conservative person in there over a uh, Bernie Sanders or a Hillary Clinton or or whoever else that the Democrats decide to throw up there, I guess I'll do that. But I can tell you this, there isn't a single Democrat that I can see that will ever, ever, ever be worth my time or my vote. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's Innovative Boot Camp Program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. Stuck in a boring, low-paid job? By 2017, there will be a shortage of 2 million cybersecurity jobs worldwide. If you have a technical background but don't have a computer certification, you are being drastically underpaid. In months, you could be qualified for a new job in information technology, making real money with real job security. A new career is just a few clicks away at thecodeoflearning.com. Is the number that you can call uh, 603-835-3224. There is some sad news today. Sad news for those of you who like the movie series The Expendables. I like Expendables. I love the three movies. I mean, they're they're just great, fun entertainment, and it's it's a chance to see all those wonderful, you know, larger than life action hero stars uh, make kind of make fun of themselves because they're all getting old. Um. So. <laughs> so, but the sad news is, is that evidently. The li- I don't know how they're going to make... Oh, I knew the last Expendables, they, they introduced some young people into this. Now, it was okay, but well, I was just looking for all the old-timers. You know, all the all the big-time Hollywood, you know, larger-than-life hero stars from the 80s and 90s. That, that's who you want to see, in the, in the, in the, because that's the way they uh, portrayed the original Expendables movie. And, and and you wanted to see them. But evidently, the producers of the series has, has asked Sylvester Stallone to step out uh, of the series due to his excess usage of muscle-enhancing sub, uh, supplements. And according to certain sources, and this is from TMZ, I guess, uh, MediaDirects.com. The sources say Sylvester Stallone was using pills on a regular basis and, w- and was getting incredibly bigger. People were concerned about his health. Now, from what I understand, yeah, yeah, he used supplements, but they were one legal. Two, they weren't the type. They weren't the type of uh, supplements that would be uh, that are banned in any of the sports, uh, professional sports arenas. So. I don't understand what their issue. I mean, the guy is like, look at him. He's over 60 years old and he looks like that. I mean, really? I mean, if he is taking some, you know, I'm going to call them green supplements. Even if he is taking some green supplements. um, So? 
if they're not really harming him, if they're not, if they won't harm other people who, dis, who decide to try them as well. Uh, I mean, they're mostly vitamins and minerals and amino acids and you know superfoods and that kind of stuff that's in proteins and stuff. From what I understand, I'm not an expert in that area, but from what I understand, that's what those types of they call them stacks. I guess where you, you take different types of of supplements, um, and, and you and you take them with other types of supplements together and they call it stacking and that's about the extent of my understanding and knowledge of such things <coughs> and you <coughs> excuse me you take them at different times of the day um I, I also believe that that's part of the the regimen you have to do this um methodically and faithfully on a daily basis for a certain period of time usually months in order to to see any type of of result, so it's not something that you can try for a week and you know and decide well it's not and I'll take a break. Now, from what I understand, you have to do it on a daily basis, seven days a week for at least ninety days and sometimes one hundred and twenty. So, for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Rio Linda, that's that's anywhere from three to six months that you have to do this type of regimen on a day, and you have to do certain exercises. You know, through uh, through their t- there are certain ways that you exercise or you work out, and that you have to do certain kinds, and you have to limit yourself in not doing. In other words, if you're trying to put on muscle, if you're trying to pack on muscle when you're doing these uh, supplemental stacks, from what I understand, you cannot do a lot of aerobic activity because aerobic activity, yes, burns the calories and burns fat, but if you get your fat count down or your fat level below 10%, when you work out, the problem that a lot of people have is not only are they burning fat calories, but they're now also dipping into the reserves in their muscles and burning muscle calories. So their muscles are not really building uh, in the end, they just stay the same. So a lot of people don't see any results because they do too much cardio. You can't do a lot of aerobic activity when you're doing, if you're trying to pack on muscle. Now, if your idea or your goal is to be lean, mean, fast, and, and super uh, aerobic, then yeah, you do a lot of cardio. And you're not worried about building muscle. You're worried about toning that muscle so it's it's capable of, of carrying the load of of low oxygen when you're working out and when you're doing whatever you're doing you know a biker or, you know bicyclist or something like that but you have to do it for a specific amount of time in order for you to see results for it to work and to see Sylvester Stallone well obviously he's been doing this for a long time and whenever you see him on TV or in a movie, or being interviewed, he looks good. He doesn't look like he's harming himself. He looks like he's taking care of himself. In that, he looks like a he looks like a guy that doesn't want to be in his sixties. And I'm not saying he's had plastic surgery. I don't know if he has or hasn't. It doesn't really matter. I'm just saying that body wise, the man is in fantastic shape. And yeah, he's huge. But he's not very. The other thing is, he's not really all that tall. I know if you look at if you look at Sylvester Stallone in the movies, he looks like he might be over six feet tall. That's just the angle of the cameras on him. He's really like only five eight or five nine. And I I remember um, reading something about the original Rocky movie that they had to make a special set uh, when 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 Talia Shire, his wife in Rocky, and him were in scenes together. They had to make, um, like, like when they were walking down the street on the sidewalk, they actually had to build the set so it was an invisible to the camera and to the audience. But she was actually in the, on the sidewalk on the set that was actually built lower than the part of the sidewalk that Sylvester Stallone was walking on because he had to appear taller than her. If you notice, they didn't really show their feet all that much when they were walking. So they had, it was trick photography and trick staging to make Sylvester look like he was a, this big towering professional boxer. Cause let's face it. He's going to be the professional heavyweight boxer of the world in the Rocky movie. He can't be five, eight or five, nine. He's got to be at least six foot, right? He's going to be a big giant guy. And, and they've done the same thing with other stars like Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, again, another small, smallish kind of guy. 
And I know if you read their profiles, you know, and stuff, they'll say, well, yeah, they're five, nine or five. Uh, I, I remember this, uh, uh, Hal Sparks once said that, you know, yeah, I'm five, ten in, in, in a, in a TV show or movie that he was in. He, uh, he said it was five, ten. Now I went and looked up the truth. Hal Sparks is five, eight. So they all play it up. No, he was the guy who did, who originally did, was it talk soup, I think? On, um, is it Comedy Channel? He was the first host of that. Now, I, look, if you have entertainment industry lying and faking about their own height, what do you think politicians are going to do? What do you think politicians are going to lie about? I mean, if it's that important... Uh, for Hollywood to make us think that these that these stars are bigger than they are, what do you think your politician is going to do? Of course they're going to lie to you. They, because they need to make themselves look bigger, better, badder than the next politician. So it's our job as the voter to make sure that those people that we hire, i.e. by voting for them, are honest enough, at least with those who who they represent. Now, I don't care if Kelly Ayotte, one of my senators here in New Hampshire, goes off to California and tells Californians that she's actually six feet tall. I don't care. But when she's when she's in New Hampshire and she's she's in front of New Hampshireites, she needs to tell them that she's only five six. Get my point? She's responsible to the people that elected her. <coughs> she's not, she's not, <laughs> geez. she is not responsible to the people of California. People of California have elected their own representatives. Those people are responsible to the people of California. And when it comes to the president, the president is responsible to all of us. And I will reiterate it again. Chris Rock had it wrong. Obama is not our boss. The president is not our boss. Now, I can sure sure as hell tell you that they did not say that about George W. Bush. They were not out there saying, well, George Bush is our boss. They were not saying that. No. So why the hell did they say it about Obama? Look, I'm going to bring skin color into it. The only reason why this guy is supposedly liked so much is simply because he's half black. I'm t- that is the only reason. There is no other reason. His policies have failed. You have world leaders who are ignoring him or laughing at him or even just coming out and saying, ah, well, you know, America is now a power vacuum. And you got Putin stepping in. So don't tell me people are paying attention over there. They're not. You got you got Benjamin Netanyahu coming here to the to the United Nations after our president speaks, and he throws down the gauntlet, man. I watched that speech, a uh, 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 video of it, that that Benjamin Netanyahu gave to the UN. My God, that is a world leader right there. In no uncertain terms, he was clear. He told that UN body that you guys are responsible for this kind of crap and that Israel was not going to stand by and let it happen. And he was sick and tired of that body condemning Israel time after time after time after time and that he was not going to have any more of it. Because it was his nation of 6 million, slightly over 6 million people who are mostly Jew, Jewish, who, who are in the crosshairs of Iran and other uh, Islamic radicals. And he is not going to be play, you know, play footsie with these people. Well, you got, you want to talk about a guy who gets it and understands it. That's Bibi Netanyahu. You got a guy who understands what's going on and is making his moves now because there's nobody to oppose him, and that's and that's uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin. 
You want to talk about two powerful world leaders? There you are right there. And you want to talk about a third one, President Xi of China. Oh, you know, we don't really pay attention to him. Why? No, because they're in China. Let me tell you something. Those are three world leaders right there. What we got is not. The most powerful nation on the planet has been made impotent by a boy in the White House. We don't, and the only reason that you on the left like this guy is because he's half black and you feel some sort of stupid, ridiculous sense of pride that you're part of making history by electing this country's first black president. Well, if you guys were so interested in making history, why didn't you elect Alan Keyes? Just saying, why, why do you on the left diss Dr. Benjamin Carson? Just saying. The only reason that you guys like Obama right now, because he has devastated the economy. And look, here it is. Um, more numbers. Nearly 95 million Americans are out of work. And you want to tell me that you believe in this lie, this, uh, it's more than a myth, it's just a flat out, unadulterated lie that unemployment's at 5.3%. The number and percentage has not been this high since 1977-78. Oh, who was president back then? Uh, yeah, Jimmy Carter. I remember I was chastised once about making fun of Jimmy Carter because he now has cancer. My response was, so? He has cancer. I hope he feels better. Doesn't change what type of a president he was. Doesn't change the fact that he's an awful diplomat and should not be on the world stage doing anything in the name of the United States. Sorry he has cancer, but he's still a jackass. I, I don't know wh why it is all of a sudden if a person gets ill, gets sick, that we're now supposed to just you know forget everything that they've done in their past and just say, well, yeah, well he's sick now. No. You want to call me unfeeling and uncaring, go ahead. I'm just calling myself logical and to the point. Am I supposed to praise him now because he has cancer? I don't think so. If if Barack Obama ever gets cancer, will we will we be forced to praise him from his eight years in office? Oh, hell no. I will still consider him and call him the worst president in American history. God forbid we get somebody worse. We'll never survive. <coughs> Do we have 95 million Americans? <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez, I need a drink. Hold on a second. I need a drink. A ah, drink of water is good for you. We have 95 million Americans who are unemployed. 95 million. And yet we have this H1B crap importing. Import, do you realize... I've got a story here. Let me find this story. Dude, I thought I know I saw it. Bum -ba -dum -ba -da 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 no fly zone. By the way, did you know that washing dishes releases stress? Hand washing dishes. Yeah, we'll get to that one. Uh, jobs up. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> jobs are only up for immigrants. They're up fourteen thousand. For immigrants. But if you're a native born American, well, your employment numbers are down by 262,000. So we're importing people left and right to take the place of Americans. 
For a third month in a row, native-born Americans saw their job numbers tumble while immigrants experience solid gains, according to the monthly Bureau of Labor Statistics. So, you all you liberals that are listening to the program, I'm getting these numbers from the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is a part of the Department of Labor, which is the Obama administration. According to the monthly numbers released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, foreign-born jobs numbers increased by 14,000, while those for native-born Americans fell off a cliff by 262,000. Wow. Over the past three months, the jobs, uh, job numbers for native-born, uh, native-born Americans have dropped nearly by 1 million Exactly the number of jobs President Obama promised to add when he ran for re-election in 2012. During that that job, uh, during that time period, same time period, jobs for immigrants drew by almost 220,000. So I want to ask you again: Why is it exactly that you liberals like Obama? Why? Hey, want some more numbers? I got some more here for you. Women. You women out there. Got to ask you this question. Why do you want Hillary for president when she was a part of an administration that caused you to lose jobs? Why do you like Obama when record number 56, almost 57 million women now not in labor force. Again, another record. And we're not talking about women who want to be stay-at-home moms or don't want to have a job. We're talking about women who did have jobs, who want a job, are now out of the labor force. Nearly 57 million of them. And yet you want to tell me that you are for... Obama, that Obama has done such a wonderful job on our economy, that our economy is booming and roaring back, really. <coughs> 90, 95 million Americans unemployed, out of work, can't find a job. Nearly 57 million of them are women, unemployed, can't find a job. And yet you want to go out there and talk about how good a job Barack Obama is doing and the Democrats have done. And the Republicans, oh, it's the Republicans' fault then, right? No, it's not. In fact, you know, you got all you wonderful college students out there who are trying to support Bernie Sanders and his idea of a utopia. Well, here's something interesting for you that the Daily Caller reported on because the lamestream media won't re- won't report it. Uh, you know, hey, Bernie, and, and, and let's face it, B- Vermont is not exactly what you would call a conservative paradise. Bernie's socialist paradise. You know, his some of his ideas have been implemented in the state of Vermont. Bernie Sanders, his state of Vermont is realizing a brain drain. They're experiencing a brain drain. Now, what exactly is that? College grads are fleeing Vermont because there are no jobs there. So college grads, you know, co- kids go off to college. They go to college someplace else. You know, they're from Vermont. They go to college someplace else, come back home, uh, or they get educated within the state of Vermont. Uh, or you get a bunch of people from out of state coming into the state of Vermont. They get educated, get a degree, look around the state of Vermont because maybe they like it and they want to stay. So they look around the state of Vermont for a job. They look, 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 cannot find anything. So what do they do? They leave. Because the state is not conducive to growing its economy. 
Look, we're kind of running into the same problem right here in the state of New Hampshire. I don't. What we have is we have an importation of a bunch of liberals from the states of Massachusetts, New York, and California. I can't tell you how many times I have seen, you know, when I saw, say, out-of-state plates. I'm not talking about New England states because, you know, New England states are so small. People can go back and forth all the time. Uh, but I'm talking about out of state, out of New England plates from New York and California. It is absolutely surprising and sickening how many people are moving here. You look in the parking lots of some of the major apartment complexes in the three major cities, and you will see a lot of foreign plates. And those foreign plates usually say New York or California. There's another foreign plate that I see here a lot, but they don't tend to stay. They're here for visits. And that's in the state of Pennsylvania. And they're probably not from the cities of Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or Harrisburg or something. They're probably in the outlying areas, in the rural areas, where it's a lot more conservative, where Pennsylvanians have been taking back their county governments and trying to turn things around. Oh, those people are probably staying in Pennsylvania because they're not moving here. But those other wonderful idiots from states that are failing, like New York and California, they're moving here. And you know what? We've got two groups of people who are leaving. We got a re- we got retirees that are leaving. Well, mostly because of weather. But then we also have the brain drain too. All these wonderful kids get all these wonderful degrees in in an area where there are more colleges per capita than any place on the planet and they're booking it out of New Hampshire and New England too because why? There are no jobs. And yet we're supposed to say that liberalism, socialism, communism, leftism, hey, we're supposed to say that's that's what makes everything tick and work. All you got to do is ask these people, well, what has liberalism done for you lately? And they can't give you an honest answer. It's all about feeling. All they got to do is feel, oh, I feel that Bernie's on our side. No, Bernie's not on your side. Bernie already told you that he's going to bankrupt this country if he's elected president. He told you that. And yet, you still think you want to elect him. Wow. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140.
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support... Visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a non-profit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again, or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. The leader in talk radio on the Internet. Right here on K98Talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? 
The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous 
ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo-rah. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support... Visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. 
But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a non-profit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again, or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. probably should ask your grandparents if they're still alive. Or maybe your parents. Maybe they'll know what Boogaloo is. Go ahead, ask them. Ask them what Boogaloo is. I'm not going to tell you what Boogaloo is. I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you. you know, some of this stuff you're going to have to find out for your, you know, find out for yourself. You know, when I was a kid, I used to ask my mother, you know, when I heard a word on TV that I, that I didn't know what it meant and what it, uh, you know, what it, what it said or what they were saying, I would say, Mom, what does that word mean? And my mom would always look at me and say, we got a dictionary. So I'd go look it up. And it was, it, I remembered it better. Basically, that's how I grew my, my vocabulary. I would hear somebody say a word I did not know what that word meant. And I would do my best to try to spell it in my head and look it up. I'm a terrible speller, I'll admit it. I I almost always found the word eventually. It took me some time, sometimes, to find the word. But I tell you, all that time made me focus so that when I found it, I I would remember what it meant. Unfortunately, it didn't really help me with my spelling. I didn't focus on the spelling of the word. I should have probably done that too. But I wanted to know what the words meant. And so, whatever my whatever level or category of my vocabulary, and I have told I have been told that it is uh, rather extensive. Uh, that it is above. It is I. You know, I didn't go to school for a master's degree or a PhD degree, but I have been told that I have a vocabulary. That would be the equivalent of somebody trying to go for their PhD, who was a PhD, who's PhD educated. 
And that's simply because I was always fascinated by words and what they meant. I remember one particular word. I, we were watching Magnum P.I. My mother loved Magnum P.I. Loved Magnum P.I. And what was the butler's name, the housekeeper's name? I know Magnum was the was the security person. <clears throat> and then there was um I don't I didn't watch the show very but the, the English guy who was the care caretaker of the and manager of the property. For this author, I don't think the author ever was at that property, at least not in the show, right? I I don't I don't know. But he used the word tedious. And that struck me. I'm like, T- what? T- 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 tedious? And of course, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is I turn around, Mom, what is that? And she points to the dictionary. To the shelf where the dictionary is. Bookshelf. So I go look it up. Find out what it means. It took me, I, I do remember, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes because I couldn't, I didn't know how to spell it. So, but I found it, and the very next day in English class, my English teacher, Mrs. Crossman, who probably should have been teaching college English because she actually said our first day of class, no high school student ever deserves to get an A in English. She was dead serious. And I was always, except for spelling, I was always an A student in English. And that first semester, for the first time in my life, I got a C in English. Man, that pissed me off. So I came in one day, and we were talking about something, and I had to go up to her desk, and I just, I used the word tedious. And you know, she stopped what she was doing, looked up at me and smiled, and said, I am sorry if this seems tedious to you. But it is something that is necessary. And as I walked away, she said, very good use of that word. That semester, I got a B in her class. Never got an A from her. For the rest of the year, I got Bs. So in my book, a B for her is an A. And all because I wanted to know what words meant. That's why I say words have meaning. You just can't decide to change them willy-nilly. Sure, you could use colloquial speech and that kind of stuff and say, you know, well, you know, hey, cool doesn't necessarily mean physical cool. It means, you know, you're somebody that's good. And bad can now mean somebody that's good. That's colloquialism. But the everyday Tried and true, I should say, government meaning of the word still stands. Well, at least until we had Bill Clinton in office. Now, all of a sudden, words aren't supposed to mean what they mean. Oh, yeah, they do. Because you can't have a just society without knowing what is just. And the only way that you know something is just or unjust is if you are actually have words that have actual solid meaning. Well, the actual solid meaning now, as we see with this Oregon shooting, is that we think, <coughs> or a lot of liberals think, that guns are the cause of our distress. No, guns are not the cause, but we have these gun-free zones, but they don't know what gun-free zone actually means. What it means to a criminal is soft target area. Guns, uh, criminals don't like to go into hard target areas. Why do you think there's never, ever been a mass, and somebody said this today, there's never, ever been a mass shooting where there are a lot of guns. You ever go to a gun show and see a mass shooting? No. A gun show. Ever see a mass shooting in a police station? Well, only in the movies. 
Why? Because everybody has a gun. Nobody's going to go into a hard, a hard target area and try to shoot it up because they're going to sh- they're going to get shot at. They go to soft targets. And what are the some of the most what are some of the softest targets in our country? Well, there's they are our schools of all levels because in a lot of schools even the security personnel don't have a gun. Now, I'm sorry, but frankly, what kind of a security person are you if you can't defend life and property? Well, they can pick up the phone and dial 911. Sure, you can get pick up the phone and dial 911 while you're being shot. They can't they can't defend anybody. Dialing 911 is not defending anybody. Because anybody can dial nine and dial nine one one, and and in, in this day and age, uh, you know, maybe twenty years ago, before the cell phone was really prevalent everywhere, and, and the only place that you could make a phone call was from a landline phone, which wasn't everywhere. Okay, maybe there was a little bit more uh, to be said about dialing nine one one and the secure of the security guard. But let's face it, today when every just about everybody has a cell phone. And everybody uh, is hiding under their desk dialing 911. The security guard doesn't need to do that. The security guard is supposed to be doing what? Protecting life and property. But if somebody's shooting, the security guard is going to go hide in the security shack. Because there's no way he can defend against that without having a gun himself. So gun-free zone means soft target. Easy target. Low resistance target. Am I making myself abundantly clear on this? To y'all folks who think that that people should give up their guns, you think that you're trying to protect the innocent. No, you're putting the innocent in danger. Remember, we have some gun-free zones. And our gun-free zone cities... They have some of the highest violent crime rate in the country, on the planet. There are some countries that have a higher violent crime rate than the United States because they're gun-free countries. You start letting the people pack and carry and let the people defend them, be able to defend themselves properly, and you see violent crime rate starts to drop. <coughs> Because a criminal doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, can I get rid of this tickle? Because a criminal does not want to go up against a hard target. All they want to do is go up against soft targets. Because, you know, hey, well, criminals are really cowards when it comes right down to it. Most criminals are cowards. They, they don't want confrontation. They, they don't want to be challenged. Look, whenever anybody attacks, uh, like say, or robs a bank or something, what's the first thing that they do? First thing they do is take out the person with the gun. Because they expect that nobody else in the bank is going to have one. The, the first thing you do is you take out the obvious, the, the person who obviously probably has one, You take them out, you subdue them, kill them, whatever. Take them out. Make sure that they cannot retaliate. First thing they do. Hell, they even do that in the movies. And then, then you're able to control everybody. So when you have soft targets, that means that you'll be able to do anything that you want to whomever you want. So long as there's nobody there to challenge you. Now, I know that there's, there's a, God bless this vet, but the man was shot seven times. I'm surprised he's alive because he charged the gunman trying to save the lives of other people. And he got shot seven times, but he's still alive. Thank God for him. 
Let me tell you what a surpri- would have surprised this gunman. The surprise would have come from somebody else who was carrying a gun. That would have been a huge surprise because they would be firing back at him. Now, whenever there is a, a legal carrying citizen in an area where there is somebody using a gun, what happens? And that citizen knows how to use that firearm. They shoot back. Lives are saved. The crime is usually stopped or the criminal is usually scared off. Somebody breaks into your house and you shoot at them. What do they try to do? They try to get out. Because criminals want soft, easy targets. They don't want a hard target. And so what we have here is uh, is a shooter out in Oregon who went off the deep end and decided that he was going to hit a hard target. Or, excuse me, a soft target. He didn't go for a hard target. He went for a soft target. And again, the softest targets in this country, everybody knows, are, are our schools. Be they, be they elementary, middle, high, or college level. They're soft targets because they're gun-free zones. So now we have nine people dead. And liberals want to run around and try to single out the fact that we need tougher gun laws. Not a single gun law. And we have a lot of gun laws on the books. Not a single gun law would have prevented this. Not a single one. Not a single gun law that has been proposed would have prevented this. Not a single one. All those gun laws would would do would be uh, would be successful uh, in taking guns out of law abiding citizens' hands, so that we would end up with more soft targets. Because criminals will get their hands on, if they want a gun, they'll get their hands on a gun. Make no mistake, no mistake about it. They do. A criminal does not usually go through the legal channels to obtain a firearm. They don't. Now this Oregon shooter, this is now being reported in many places, and here's from the New York Post. The Oregon gunman He singled out Christians during his shooting rampage. Evidently, he asked people point blank, are you a Christian? And if the the answer was positive, he was heard saying one time, well, you're going to see God in one second. Because he asked him what religion they were. That if you're a Christian, stand up. So they would stand up. And he said, good, because because you're a Christian, you're going to see God in just about one second. And then he would shoot them. So here's a man that was anti-Christian, obviously. As Now, now, they're not reporting that he was influenced by Islam. And I'm not suggesting that he was. But I am going to correlate that there is another group of people who are anti-Christian. And that they behead them. And they hang them. And they shoot them in the back of the head. So now, but I don't hear anybody on the left saying there's a war on Christians or a war on Christianity. Why? There's a war on everything else. There's a war on women. I'll tell you why they're not saying there's a war in Christianity. 
Because every other kind of war, quote unquote, that they want to say is a war, war on women, they're trying to blame conservatives and Republicans for it. There's a Republican war on women. There's a Republican war on gays. There's a Republican war on this person, this kind of person. There's a Republican war. But they cannot say that there's a Republican war on Christians. Because Republicans are Christians. Have you noticed that, folks? Have you noticed how nobody on the left is saying there is a anywhere, anywhere, from the Middle East to the United States, do you notice that the left does not say that there is a war on Christians? And there is a war on Christians. Because it cannot fit into their political agenda and ideology. Because it would mean that there's a war on the very people that they say are committing war on everybody else. It doesn't fit. There is nobody except for other Republican Christians who are saying that there's a war on Christians. And of course, the lamestream media isn't going to report that. They're not saying it. Oh, there's, today, the war on Christians continued by ISIS beheading another nine Christ, Coptic Christians. They don't say that. The gunman, oh, they, they, uh, there's a war on Christians as this, gun, this crazy gunman went to or, the Oregon College and opened fire and killed uh, nine Christians. They don't say that. Have you noticed? Oh, yeah, I noticed. And let me tell you something. There is a war on Christians. It's a big one. And Christians are dying. All over the place. They're dying here now. Because there is a real war on Christians. Not some made up, ginned up, not real type of war like war on women. There's no war on women. There is a real war on Christians. And I think Christians have the ability, have the God-given right to arm themselves, to protect themselves, to defend themselves from anybody who wants to do them harm. So this nut job gets a gun. I guess I saw a report. What do you have? He had five guns on him. So he, he meant to do some harm. And yet you got Obama running to the microphone saying, yeah, we need the tougher gun laws. I want tougher gun laws. I, I, I. Me, me, me. I think somebody counted 28 times in a, in a what, 12 minute speech that he used the, the, the first person. Of I or me. First person identifier. I or me. Nine people died. Because this jackass decided to hit a soft target that was made soft by liberal policy and ideology. And then he specifically asked, who is a Christian? And then he proceeded to blow them away. And yet our president and the Democrats run to microphones. They're running, they're tripping over themselves to get to the microphone first. They're running to microphones and the lamestream media is blasting their message all over the place. We need more gun laws. We've got to change the Second Amendment. That would not have prevented this tragedy. It would not. More gun laws would not have prevented any mass shooting that I know of that has taken place in this country over the last 20 years. Because we have a ton of gun laws already.
And yet you want to tell me that that's what the real deal is, that's what's really going to work, is more gun laws? I don't think so. But there are people out there who think that, yeah, I guess that's what we need is more gun laws. Because if we have more gun laws, then we'll have less shootings. And if we have less shootings, then we'll have less, we'll have less people that are getting killed. No, it'll be like Washington DC when they didn't have guns in the people's hands. You'll have more. More and more. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on water. Washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1 800 616 8010. That's 1 800 616 8010. Again, 1 800 616 8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes minutes with power swabs in five minutes you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth and in seven days six shades it's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers the secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by dr martin ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth best of all there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done to try power swabs risk-free call 1-800-291-5140 That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 50 $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. Start training for a new career in as little as 18 days. National EMS Institute's innovative boot camp program will train you for a new career. Learn to respond to emergency situations and become a certified EMT in just 18 days. National EMS Institute guarantees 100% job placement. Visit www.nationalemsinstitute.com today to learn more about our 18-day boot camp. Or call us at 1-800-497-6732. National EMS Institute. Stuck in a boring, low-paid job? By 2017, there will be a shortage of 2 million cybersecurity jobs worldwide. If you have a technical background but don't have a computer certification, you're being drastically underpaid. In months, you could be qualified for a new job in information technology, making real money with real job security. A new career is just a few clicks away at thecodeoflearning.com. You're 
listening to The Rod Echo Show. as always is 603-835-3224 and yes i really do like to hear from you i had somebody tell me you don't want to talk to anybody uh yeah i do i would like to hear what's on other people's mind uh mine so yeah i do would like to talk to other people um i'm not gonna beg people to call you're not going to hear me say, oh, please, please call somebody, please call the show. No, uh, frankly, look, this is why I don't do a lot of interviews on this program. Because the program is called The Rod Eccle Show. So, frankly, and not being in an arrogant, erudite way, the program is about what I think. Uh, but it's also about dialogue, conversing with other people. And I don't have a problem with people. I'll keep people on the phone as long as they're interesting. You know, I'm, not, I'm not like a, you know all the other wonderful talk shows that, that, that they think it's pretty cool to cut somebody off after 30 seconds. No, I'll, you know, I'll keep you on for a whole segment if you call, if you're interesting. So... Yeah, I like people to call so I can have a dialogue with them. It's actually a lot of fun, especially when liberals call. I think it's a lot of fun when I have a liberal call. Because uh, yeah, they're the ones that, that, I'm, that we're, we as conservatives are, quote unquote, warring against anyway. So it's a lot of fun to have a liberal call the program. So what, you know what you should do? I, I probably shouldn't say this. You should probably trick your liberal friends into calling. Find, give them a hot button or something that really gets them fired up. That that that, that, that they're really gonna want to pound somebody on. Say, oh yeah, this this guy, man, you gotta get to this guy because uh, yeah, yeah. He if, if if you you know be a little mischi- uh, mischievous too. I'm not saying lie to them, but you know, kind of prod them to think that maybe I think the way they think. I, don't know, I think it'd be. I always, when liberals ever call, when liberals call this program, and ever since two thousand nine, when liberals have called this program, I have always had fun with them. And believe it or not, I probably had a few conversions right on the phone. Uh, so that's the other reason, I, I, and that's probably why liberals don't want to call because they don't want to be converted. They don't want to know the truth. That's too bad. Hey, the truth is that Hillary's poll numbers are in free fall. Did you know that? Uh, Hillary's numbers keep falling. Oh, wasn't there a Tom Petty song about falling? Uh, it was in eighty. They played it, overplayed it in the eighties all the time. And you know what? I think if you ever listen to those classic rock stations, you'll hear you'll hear it there too. Nowadays, um, yeah, Tom. I, I should probably yeah. I I should probably get a a list of songs that I can play like that. So whenever you know. It just makes it sound a little bit better. But the the problem with doing stuff like that is that there are licensing fees that you have to pay. And believe me, uh, trust me, you know, when you get license, when you pay for licensing so you can legally play some of the, some of these songs that you hear on the air, uh, it gets real expensive. They rake you over the coals, man. I mean, you got to pay a, you got to pay an annual fee and then you got to pay a monthly membership and then you got to pay per song that you play every time you play it. Even if you only play 30 seconds, you got to pay the full fee for that song. So I don't play any, anything that is licensed that, that, that needs to have a licensing agreement to play. So all the stuff that you hear me play on this program is license free. I've got permission from the various artists to play their music license royalty free so i don't i don't i don't play any royal anything that has a royalty attached to it because you have to go through licensing ag- agencies and and they just rake you over the coals and sometimes you know the artists just like to have their stuff they just like to hear their stuff played and uh, sometimes an artist will what sometimes an artist will demand that you just give them credit all the time. But you know what? I'm not a DJ, 
So if an artist says, well, you got to say that, that this is my song and what the title is every time you play it. Well, I'm not going to play you. I'm not a DJ. I don't have time to do that. So all the stuff that you hear being played here is license and royalty free. And I have full permission to use it. License and royalty free. <clears throat> and I know that there are probably some stations that you're listening to this program on. Uh, that may have licensing deals, but other stations do not. And really, it isn't that other station's responsibility. It's mine, because it's also being played on my station. So I would have to be the one to cover it first. Now, whether... Uh, and for those stations that do not have licensing agreements, they can get you know into trouble if, I, if they play my show uh, and they don't have licensing, because they, they get you each time. So if... If you hear it here, but then you go to one of my networks and hear a rebroadcast, well, that rebroadcast is a different time that that's being played. So it's got to be paid. The fee has got to be paid again. See what I'm saying? See how costly that gets? Uh, which is why a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, syndicated shows have very little royalty or license type of stuff on their programs because it gets very expensive when things start getting played over. And I don't, you know, I don't know how, how some of the big guys do it, like Rush and those guys, you know, they'll play certain, you know, the Rush's theme music is he's got to pay a royalty, royalty every time it's played. Um, but that's also, you know, he also has it playing everywhere. So if people download his show because they have the rush 24 seven thing then I think he's got to pay an extra fee for that too. So, but you know, they can afford it. They're, they're the big guys and uh, I'm just not going to play that game. I'm not going to, I'm staying free of that, but Hillary's poll numbers are in a free fall and uh, she's doesn't look like she's going to come out of it anytime soon. She's in real, she's in as native Americans say, he big trouble. And Bernie said, <coughs> Oh, dang, this tickle. Bernie Sanders is hot on her heels as far as not only poll numbers, but in fundraising. Now, Hillary, over the past three months, raised something like a little over $28 million, but Bernie Sanders raised about a little over $26 million. Now, And Hillary had to get that $28 million over multiple, 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 it was like 28 or 30 different events. Bernie Sanders had like five different fundraising events. So he is out earning Hillary Clinton right now. And her poll numbers reach an historic low. Oh, she's down. She's well, she's, I think she's under the, the 50 percent mark as far as uh you know her ratings uh but her favorable ratings is now down to somewhere around the 38 percent level and her are and, and her unfavorable ratings is now uh somewhere over the 56 percent margin uh, it's it's getting pretty rough for her out there And that's way down from like August of 2012. <clears throat> and when she had an, she she got a favorability rating as high as 88 percent. Now she's down to 38 38 percent. That's a 50 point drop. Think about that. That's a 50 point drop. That's uh, that's around a 60-something percent fall. Well, Bernie Sanders seems to be on the uptick. I don't I don't know about the rest of you, but, you know, this good old Hillary, she needs to... She's going to have to be... I don't know. She's going to have to... Uh, she's just going to have to hang it up. She's just not, she's not, somebody else who's not uh, polling very well of late would be 
Yeah, I'm going to say his name. I'm going to say his name. Are you ready? Yeah, Jeb Bush. In a recent poll, Jeb Bush's numbers are down to 4%. 4%. That's, you know, this is the guy that everybody said, you know, was going to be the the nominee, uh, was going to be a fait accompli, he was a nominee. But that's not the way it's turning out. As a matter of fact, uh, according to some polls, Rubio has jumped ahead of Dr. Carson in some polls. Now, if you want to know who the other favored person is, if it isn't, Bush, well, this type of reporting should tell you who that is. Rubio. And there are a lot of people who don't like Rubio because of his stance on immigration. He's like this amnesty hack as well. I got to tell you, I have real problems with that myself. I do. But it's good to see that um that 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 bush is down now uh this um this poll the latest pew poll that out of, out of possible primary voters trump is still sternly and staunchly in the lead at 25% uh carson comes in second at 16% but there's another poll I'll go over in a few minutes that says that that rubio is at 16% I don't know what poll that is. Pew is usually pretty reputable um, if you want to follow polls. And that you have Rubio in third at 8%, along with Fiorina at 8%, Cruz down at 6%, Bush slips to 4%, Huckabee, Paul uh, are each at 2%, and all the others uh, total up to be 4%. So Christie doesn't even have 2% for all you Christie fans out there. Sorry, that's the truth. And I know a lot of people think that, well, geez, we just can't have Donald. I have said, look, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to support Donald in the primary or not. I don't, I don't know yet. But I, do, I will say this, that if Trump gets the nomination, he's highly electable over any Democrat that's currently out there. He can beat any Democrat that's out there. In that for a for a term for four years, Donald Trump would not be a bad choice for president of the United States of America. I'm just putting it out there for all you Trump naysayers. I'm not telling you that, that you need to turn around and flip and go support the guy through the primaries, but I'm telling you that if he is the nominee, he's not a Romney. He's not a McCain. The guy is a businessman that knows what he's doing. He's a successful businessman. And I don't care what you say if he's worth $4 million, $10 million, $15 million, or you know, $4 billion, $10 billion, $100 billion. It doesn't really matter. The man is a self-made man, pretty much, in that he's dealt with disaster, economic disaster, and lived through it. He has never filed personal bankruptcy. Understand that. He has never filed personal bankruptcy bankruptcy the man knows how to negotiate his way out of a jam and if he knows how to negotiate and get the best deal possible even in foreign countries dealing with foreign governments you better believe because his idea of a win-win is donald wins he doesn't care if anybody else wins a win-win situation for donald trump is donald wins and that's the kind of guy I want on our side negotiating for our interests as a nation is that the win-win situation is when America wins. We don't care if anybody else wins. As long as America wins, that's a win-win. That's a, and that's, he's, the, he's the kind of guy that's going to get a win-win for the USA every single time. Or he's not going to do it. <coughs> He's also, yeah, he might be a little bit unpredictable and a little bit roguish, but, you know, those are the kind of guys that sort of keep other arrogant dictators in check. You know, people thought that they could test, they thought they were going to test Ronald Reagan. And they learned pretty quickly that they should not test him. 
and they didn't. And when Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down these this wall, meaning get rid of communism, they did. We need, a, we need another president like that. We need another president that can speak softly. Reagan did speak softly. Uh, he carried a big, powerful stick, man, and he was able to back up his soft words. Next president's got a tremendous job of rebuilding our military. I'll tell you that. That's just that. What this guy, current president, has done to our military is, I'm it's it's just shy of being uh, treasonous. I don't like to use that word very often, but it really is. Uh, he has decimated our military. I mean, he's decimated the ranks. He's decimated the equipment ability. He's decimated the morale. Uh, he has done a... If you thought Jimmy Carter was bad for the military, then you're not paying attention to what this guy has done. And he's not done yet. That's the scary part. And we've got countries like Russia and China and Iran building up and, and puffing their chest out, saying, ah... You know, you're not so big anymore, are you, USA? No, we still have the best, the best trained, best equipped military on the planet. But as far as the numbers, you know, we're not the best by, by a large margin anymore. I mean, you got Russian stuff that's pretty equivalent to ours in certain circumstances. And you got China, even though their stuff may not be at our level yet, they've got a hell of a lot more of it. And sometimes even when you have the best equipment, all it really takes is sheer numbers to overwhelm you. Because no matter how good our stuff is, it's still limited to the number that it can take on at any one time. And if we have a military that is currently deployed that can take on, you know, let's say, a, 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 a one million man army, well, you get a two million man army and you're going to be overrun. Doesn't matter what your equipment can do. It can't handle two million. It can only handle a million. So when you got aircraft, fighter jets, oh yeah, we can shoot down, you know, uh, you know, 20 of, of the China, Chinese military aircraft for every one of ours that go down. Unfortunately, we don't have enough aircraft to take out all of theirs. Even at that ratio. You understand what I'm saying? That's how bad he's decimated our military. No matter how good our equipment and how good our pilots are, they can't defend our country for every single pilot. China's got 30. Our guys just can't do it. And I'm not being pessimistic about it. I'm being a realist. And I know the numbers are not exact science. Numbers are a little off because, you know, China doesn't have that many. But let's face it, that, the scenario is the same. We just can't handle everything that, that can be thrown at us right now. We can't. Yeah, we can do some real damage to them, which is probably why they haven't started anything with us yet. But it's dangerously close to the point where they're getting brave enough to probably actually be willing to take us on directly. Maybe not here in the United States, but in some conflict somewhere, they're going to get to the point where they feel that they're bold enough and strong enough to take us on directly. And Putin already thinks he's there. Trust me, he, what do you think he's doing down in, in Syria? You know, he's flying and he's... He's telling the U.S., hey, y'all get the hell out of here. Don't you fly. Uh-uh. No, I've come down here, and now I've got the no-fly zone. Not you. Me. And what's our president doing? He's sitting under the, sitting under the desk in the, in the Oval Office sucking his thumb. Well, I... I know somebody's going to think that that I saw him that that I was I'm being literal. That is not being literal. I'm just saying that he's 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 not doing anything. Doing jack. 
Here's a um, here's the poll that I mentioned about Rubio, and this is from the Daily Mail, actually. You know, oftentimes I have to go offshore to get news about onshore. What what? Yeah, that's pretty sad when you have to go to a foreign publication to get accurate news on what's going on in your own country because our own lamestream media just won't report it. <coughs> Marco Rubio, it says, surges... <coughs> Excuse me. Marco Rubio, it says, surges into second place and carves out space as um, latest anti-Trump. He's the latest anti-Trump, they're saying. As Donald supposedly loses eight points after California debate. Now, Rubio's ascendancy will give Bush people no end of heartburn, of course. Uh, the senator has a 16% has 16% support in a new YouGov economist poll. Putting him ahead of Ben Carson for second place behind Donald Trump. Now, it says Trump has lost eight points of support since his September 16th appearance in the primary debate, while Rubio has leaped forward by nine points. But the poll says that Donald still leads, even though Rubio is at 16%, Donald still leads with 25%. Now, I find that amazing. Well, eight, eight points, you know, that's it's still a far drop, but I find it amazing that all of these polls that keep coming out, they all say Donald's at 25 now, I don't know if that proves that these polls are accurate on Donald or if there is some sort of lamestream media conglomerate, conglomeration out there trying to limit his support by faking it at being at 25% when it could be higher. Because if we say it's at 25 that gives everybody else a chance, does it not? If Donald's at 35 40%, well, and everybody else is down you know, in the teens or less, it makes it dire, you know, it, it, it's hard to beat. But if they keep saying, well, Donald's at 25, and we got this guy, he's now at 16, he's moving up. But I thought Carson was at 16. And then I thought Fiorina was at 16. I thought Carson was at 20 at one point. Well, why is it that nobody can seem to take Donald down? Why can't they get him below the 25% mark? I just find that very interesting. You know, just things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. You, you got to wonder, what. this is why I do not believe in polls. I don't believe in them as gospel. I just look at them and say, okay, this is the. This could be a trend in this direction or a trend in that direction. But when you start seeing poll after poll after poll... Uh, showing that d various people are at s in second place and they're all hitting like 16 or 17 percent and Trump doesn't go below 25 percent, then I'm starting to think, wait a minute, everybody's got him at 25 percent and his nearest competitor is always at 16 percent? There's something fishy going on there. I'm I'm not saying that, you know, that there is a conspiracy. I'm just saying the numbers that keep coming out this way make it appear that there's some shenanigans going on. I don't know if there is or isn't. You make up your own mind by looking at all the different poll numbers, but I'm just saying it looks funny. Anyway, so Rubio's now, depending on who you're talking to, it's either uh, Carson or Rubio who's hanging in at, at around 16%. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs>
the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 